Hello Stancia blog readers. In this video I will talk about wire mock and how to match the body of an HTTP request. Uh, for this we will need a feature of wire mock called request matching uh, but the first thing to do is to actually download wire mock. Go to wiremock.org, click on docs and instead of getting started, skip down to running as, as a standalone process and click on that. Here you will see a link to the jar file, so download that. And then uh, once you have it, here are instructions for how to run it. Um, it's a jar file, that means that this was implemented uh, using Java. And uh, that means that you need the Java runtime environment to actually run the jar file. So if you don't have the Java runtime environment installed, now is a good time to pause this video and uh, download and install the Java runtime environment. Once you've downloaded the Java runtime environment, um, it doesn't actually matter where you place the jar. Uh, all that matters is that the mappings directory that you create, where you place your uh, mappings between the requests that um, the mock server will receive and the responses that you want it to give, um, this directory has to be directly underneath the jar. And let's go into mine um, and see what I've prepared for you. Uh, you can name these files whatever you want. I've named this one 200 because it's my happy path scenario that will return a status code of 200 so it seems to make sense and remember that it's one mapping per file that means that if you want five unique responses from your uh, mock server you're going to need five different JSON files yeah you can't just stuff the, uh, the different um, responses into one JSON Okay, so this, uh, this is the HTTP method that we're re um, requesting, uh, that we're waiting for. And you can see this contains a request, a request and a response. Uh, this could actually say any, uh, but usually we want something more specific like a get or a put or um, some other REST crowd operation. Uh, this is the endpoint that we're waiting for, and this is the 200. So. Let's do this, and let's use Postman. Um, and you can see that the body of the Postman request is disabled because um, uh, because it doesn't actually uh, make any sense to send anything with a get. Gets aren't meant to send things. Okay, so we're not getting anything. That's because our server is not up. So let's launch it now. It's up and it's listening on port 8080. So let's try that again. Okay, so we're sending a put. If you look here, you're going to get some helpful hints about what happened. Uh, it says request was not matched, which is true. And it even tells us what the closest match was. Closest match was, well, the endpoint is correct, but the method isn't. So let's change this to a put. And now we get a 200. Now let's try to actually send something to the server, uh, which is what puts her for. And make sure to click on raw, select raw, so that you can type in your own JSON file. I've already typed in mine. Uh, this doesn't matter in our case, um, because uh, here we haven't specified what HTTP uh, header we're actually expecting. Um, but so you could actually make this text and then it'll remove uh, the entries from the header. But to have good habits, we are sending a JSON after all. Let's select this. That'll pre-fill the headers with a content type of application JSON. And let's send it. Okay, so that's a 200. Now let's say we wanted to match on this. So let's say if it said name here for the key, then we would go to 200. Otherwise, 
we would not want to 200. Uh, so whatever the value is, the key we're looking for is name. Okay, how would we write this? Oh, well, put request this. Uh, we're missing something here. So here we would need to specify what uh, we want in the body of the request. So for that, here's what I would do. I would go to the docs and click on request matching. And then uh, the thing we're looking for is called body patterns. It's not this guy, it's not this guy, it's not this guy, uh, and it is this guy. So that's what we're looking for, uh, to be able to match the JSON path. So let's copy this. Let's uh, paste it here. Let's add a comma here. This is important. Don't forget the comma. Otherwise, your Wiremark server at launch time will choke. And let's relaunch the server. Okay, so it has relaunched with the new mappings. Um, and let's send this. Okay, we got a 200. Let's try to s send something else. Like trouble. Okay, so now we're getting a 404. Uh, whereas before, it wouldn't have cared. So we've still gotten a 200. Uh, so now, uh, take a look at this. The reason this says name is because we were indeed looking for the key called name. Uh, alternative syntax for this that might make more sense to you in the beginning is this. Uh, and of course, it's a JSON, so if uh, things were nested in there, like a, maybe there was a first name, you could do this. Uh, alternative sy syntax that I kind of like, because um, you sometimes end up with a lot of brackets anyway, so it becomes easier to read after a while, is this. Um, so dots to follow the path of the JSON. Um, so this is what we're looking for. So it's fine. Uh, now let's say when we got trouble, instead of a 404, we wanted a 400. So our rainy day scenario is a 400. Well, right now you would still get a 404. Um, if we want a 400, that's an additional response that we need to actually uh, implement. So let's do that. Um, let's call this uh, a 400.json. Okay, let's change this to 400. And we're looking for trouble. Uh, remember that we could have written it like this. That will also work. Um, but let's, let's stick with this. And let's... Uh, reload the server and yep so now we're getting a 400 when there's trouble otherwise we will still get a 200 and anything else will get us a 404 because we don't have a request uh, a response matching that request log entry on Wiremock, JSON path, and the body of the HTTP request can be found at stancia.com slash blog. Thanks for watching.